So, so allow me to proceed on. <laughs> Sorry for that. Uh, the, 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 the break up in uh, the, the video. We love to work with uh, two separate ones, but this is basically a continuation of what we have just have been doing. So, uh, we was uh, in this case. I want us to find the equation. Equation of tangents and a normal to a curve. So I have just introduced that uh, in the previous video. So I want us to proceed on with the same equation of tangent and normal to a curve. So you look at this, you notice that in this case, we have just said that if you have the gradient of a curve, you already have the gradient of the of the of the tangent. Why? Because you are you are drawing a tangent. Or for us to get just a reminder. If you want to get the gradient of the curve at that point, you draw a tangent. So if you have the gradient of the tangent, you have the gradient of the curve. If uh, you have the gradient of the curve, you have the gradient of the tangent. Notice that in this case, we have done how we have uh, uh, discussed how to get the gradient of a curve without drawing the tangent. And uh, this is what we've just done. So we have, <coughs> let me capture this question here. Let us find the equation of the tangent and the normal to the curve y is equals to x cubed plus 2x plus 1 at 1 4. So we have the equation of the curve. Find the equation of the tangent and the normal to the curve at that uh, given point. So one thing we need to know in this case is we need to figure out how do we get the gradient of the curve. How do we get the gradient of the curve? So if you have the equation of the curve, we just say to get the gradient, we differentiate. So dy over dx, which is going to be equivalent to the power, multiply by the coefficient, so 3x, uh, subtract 1, so 3x squared, uh, plus where the power is 1, so we're going to have 1 times 2, which is 2. x, so we have 1 minus 1, that is 0, so x power 0, any number to power 0 is 1. So 2x power 0 is 1, 1 times 2 is 2. When you differentiate 1, remember when you differentiate a constant, the answer is 0. So we have 3x squared plus 2, that is the gradient function. Now having the gradient function, we can get the gradient of the curve. Going to have three x, but it's at a point uh, one four, so that is the value of x and y. So the value of x is one. So we have three into one squared plus two. So three times one, one squared is one. Three times one is three. Three plus two, you have five. So the gradient of the curve is five at a point uh, one four, where x is one. So having the, gra the gradient of the curve, remember we said if you have the gradient of the curve, which is 5, you have the gradient of the tangent. So the gradient of the tangent, so let me start with 1, the tangent. So the gradient of this tangent is 5, and the tangent is passing through the point 1, 4. So, and uh, recall that a tangent is basically a straight line, and the gradient of a straight line is uniform throughout the line. So, 
uh, that is, we now refer, just recall how you are getting the equation of a straight line in form 2. If you have the gradient pipe and 1.14, you just take a general point, x1, which will now give us y minus 4 over x minus 1 is equal to 5. That is over 1, cross multiply. So you have 1 times y minus 4 is equal to 5 into x minus 1. So y minus 4 is equal to 5x minus 5. Then take both to the other side, you have y is equal to 5x negative 5 plus 1 and plus 4 is going to give us minus 1. And that is accurately the equation of the tangent. And now to the second one, normal. Normal, the other name of normal is a perpendicular. Now, recall the relationship of normal or perpendicular lines. We see M1 times M2 is equal to negative 1. So this normal is basically perpendicular to the tangent or to the curve at the point 1, 4. So, and we remember if it is perpendicular to the tangent or to the curve, we already have M1. M1 is the same as the gradient of the curve. So M1, 5, times M2 is equal to negative 1. So M2 is equal to negative 1 over 5. So the gradient of the normal is a negative 1 over 5. Again, it is passing through 1, 4. And uh, we now take a general point x1. We need to have y minus 4 over x minus 1 is equal to negative 1 over 5. Then it was multiplied. Something you will need to recall in this case is that this negative must always remain in the numerator. Such that we now left with negative 1 times x minus 1 is equal to 5 times y minus 4. So you have minus x plus 1 is equal to 5y minus 20. Take um, 1 to the other side. You have negative x. Or rather bring 21 to this side. Taking yes. We have 5y is equal to negative x plus 21. You can divide by 5 all through. You have y is equal to negative 1 over 5x um, plus 21 over 5. And that is the equation of the normal. And that is how you get the equation of the normal and the equation of the tangent using differentiation. So start by differentiating to get the gradient of the curve. Then from there, uh, you substitute the value of x to get the gradient of that curve, which is the same as the gradient of the tangent. Taking the point 1, 4, gradient 5, and the general point, you can now get a gradient, the equation of the tangent. Then the tangent, or the normal in this case, is perpendicular to the curve at the point 1, 4. So you can get a gradient of the normal, which is going to be negative 1 over 5. Then negative 1 over 5 as a gradient, we have the point 1, 4. Take a general point, x, y. So y minus 4 x minus 1 is equal to negative 1 over 5. I have said, remember, that you must always leave the, the negative in the numerator. So negative 1 times this equals multiply. You get the equation of the normal. And that is how you should be able to get the equation of the tangent and the equation of the normal.
So the next area we want to go through is uh, another area called the turning points. So you will need to know how to get the turning points of a car and what is this that we're calling the turning points. The other name for turning points is uh, stationary points. They are also called maximum of minimum. So, I recall that uh, we have such a car which is originating from these points the car will turn at a certain point and another point. So this point where the car turns is called the turning point. This is also another turning point. And the other name for turning point is what you're calling stationary points. Stationary points. So, and uh, we also call them the maximum and minimum points. So you will later be required to identify whether your point is a maximum or a minimum. So when we talk about turning points, we are still talking about the same thing, stationary points. We are also talking about maximum and minimum points. Now before I even proceed on to the next area, we need to recall one thing. In the, pre in, the, in the introduction, we say to get a grid of a curve at a certain point, you draw a tangent. Now, if you have to draw a tangent on the curve at this point, the turning point, you will get a horizontal line. The same case applies to this point. Now, what is the gradient of a horizontal line or horizontal vertical or horizontal surface? The gradient of a vertical or horizontal surface is zero. So in this case, this is a horizontal line. These are horizontal lines. The gradient or the, the gradient of the two lines is going to be zero. So gradient is zero. What is the implication of that? The implication of this is that the gradient of a curve at turning point or at maximum and minimum points is zero. The gradient at turning point or stationary point is zero. The gradient at that point is going to be zero. And uh, we can represent that as such. I want to separate these two such that I have the first one. And I am saying these are turning point, and at this point, the gradient dy over dx is equal to zero. Why we say just say that maximum and minimum point the gradient is zero. And remember, dy over dx is the gradient function. So dy over dx is equal to zero. Um, I have another one. Again, at this point, this turning point dy over dx is equal to zero. Now, how do we find this point, the maximum and the minimum points? How do we find these points? So, I want us to consider this example. Question Identify the stationary points on the curve Y is equal to X cubed minus 3x plus 2 and for each point we turn determine 
if it is a maximum or a minimum. Just about to mention a curve of this nature, this is a maximum point. When you have such a curve, this is a minimum point. That is something you really know. Just by the way, now, <coughs> how do we find the gradient, not the gradient, but the turning points, these turning points? How do we get these turning points? Remember, we said at turning points, the gradient is zero. So the first thing is to get the gradient. So dy over dx. Remember to get a gradient of a curve, you must first of all differentiate. So dy over dx. Differentiate x cubed, you get 3x squared. Differentiate 3x, you get 3. That is something you know by now. And we just said that at maximum and minimum point, the gradient is 0. So we are correct to equate that to 0. So to solve this, we can take 3 to the other side. So your 3x squared is equal to 3. Divide by 3, so you have x squared is equal to 1. So to get a value of x, I find the square root. Uh, x is equal to, remember when you get the square root of a number, the answer is plus or minus. So x is equal to plus or minus 1, which means x is equal to 1, and also x is equal to 1. Now the question is, define the point. Point in mathematics means you find the values of x and y in coordinate form. Now we already have the values of x, two values of x. x is 1, x is negative 1. So let us get the values of y first to get that point. So when x is equal to 1, positive 1, y is equal to, we have y is equal to here. So y is equal to x, 1 cubed, minus 3, 1, plus 2. Uh, the answer in that case is a, a 0. So the point in that case, the value of x is 1, the value of y we've gotten a 0. So in that case, the point will be 1, 0. We have one point. We get the second point. When x is equal to negative 1, y is equal to negative 1 cubed, 3 into negative 1 plus 2. So the answer here is uh, negative 4. Sorry, positive 4. And so the point will be negative 4. So we have the two points, the turning points. We have one turning point at 1, 0, and another turning point at negative 1, 4. So having the two turning points, the next question was, you must also determine if it is a maximum or a minimum. So I want you to use that uh, testing for maximum and minimum using second derivative. So this means that to determine whether it's a maximum or a minimum point, you di differentiate that function for the second time. So we are differentiating this for the second time. Because that was the greatest function initially. So to, to indicate your differentiating for the second time, you indicate dy, d squared y over dx. So this two means you're differentiating for the second time. So when you differentiate this for the second time, 3, 2 square, 3x three squared, 2 times 3 is 6, x, 2 minus 1 is 1. And when you differentiate 3, which is a constant, you get 0. So as you get the answer is 6x. Now replace when x is equal to positive 1. So 6 into 1, you get the answer as 6. So this is what you need to know. When you replace in the second derivative, 
the values of x, if the answer is a positive, that point is a maximum. Sorry, if it's a positive, the, that point is a minimum. Positive, minimum. Positive implies minimum, and that means therefore, 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 which point was that? Positive one. Positive one is one zero. Therefore, one zero is a minimum. Let's see when x is equal to negative one. Six into negative one. Is negative six. The gradient in this case is negative. So negative implies maximum. Therefore, the points, which points? Negative one, negative one, four. Point negative one, four is a maximum. So we have determined. So you determine whether it's a maximum or a minimum using the second derivative. So you differentiate for the second time, replace. If you get the gradient is positive, that point is a minimum. When you get the gradient is a negative, that point is a maximum. And you must write the point. Negative one, four is a maximum. Positive one, zero is a minimum. That is very important. You must write that. You must write that. It is very, very important. That is what we need to know in that case. And remember, when you try to find a turning point, stationary point, maximum, minimum, they all mean one and the same thing. And that is how you test whether it's a maximum or the point is a minimum. Or a point is a minimum. And that is what we need to know in this case. So I think we can now proceed on to another area which involves the application of uh, differentiation, the application of differentiation. So how do we apply different differentiation? And uh, this is particularly uh, in something called kinematics. And the kinematics is one of the things that you did in form two actually from one physics when you're doing the uh, branches of physics and I think you are talking about one of them being thermal dynamics which is divided into two and one of that branch was uh, kinematics so in kinematics we're basically uh, talking about motion motion So, application or differentiation in kinematics. In kinematics. Uh, so, in this case, we will need to know that one, in motion, you have one, when you move in a specific direction, you cover one displacement, and for you, as you cover that distance, you're going to be covering at a certain speed, and as you move, whether you increase your speed or decrease your speed, uh, in that case, you can talk about acceleration or deceleration. So the three are going to be very, very significant. So we have one displacement denoted by the letter S. We have two velocity denoted by the letter V. And we have three acceleration denoted by the letter A. So I am going to write these two, these three in order. I have S, V, A.
So you start with the displacement down to velocity, down to acceleration. In that order. So as you move uh, to get, uh, if, I, if I give you an expression of displacement, to get velocity, you differentiate. If I give you velocity to get acceleration, you differentiate. So basically, this direction is a differentiation. Uh, you will notice that it is different in the case of the next part of calculus, which is integration. It is a reverse process. So that is what you need to know by now. Or at this stage, SVA differentiation. You will see how that is applied uh, shortly. Uh, having mentioned that, uh, we want to demonstrate something here. <coughs> so you have an object, uh, this uh, duster here. So this duster is at a stationary point. It is at a stationary point. So if this object is at a stationary point, if it is not moving, then it has not covered any distance, which means its velocity is zero or its displacement is zero. It is not moving at any speed because it is stationary, so velocity is zero and it does not take any time, so the time is zero. So at this stage, everything is zero. Now what happens? The moment you release this object upwards, so you release it at a certain velocity. When you release it at a certain velocity, so the, immediately you release that object, you're releasing it at an initial velocity or at a certain velocity. Initial velocity. So the velocity with which you release that object is called initial velocity. And I want to mention this. Initial velocity means that time, the, the instant you release the object at an, the instant. Immediately you release the object. You need to note this. Immediately you release that object. It has not covered any time. So at initial velocity, that is immediately release the object. It has not covered any, or it has not taken any time. Immediately you release. You're releasing it at a certain velocity, say for example, 20 meters per second. So that initial velocity is uh, called, or at initial velocity, the object has not taken any time, and the time is zero. So at initial velocity, time is zero. Now this object goes to a certain height, then falls back, then falls back. But one thing happens before this object falls back. So from your knowledge in physics, for those who take physics, or even from your observation, you should be able to observe that. You can do this on your own. You'll notice one thing. Before it gets to a certain height, but before it falls back, it stops for some time. It stops for some time. What we call stops momentarily. And in that case, we can talk about momentarily. Momentarily at rest. Remember, I started by saying when this object is stationary, then it is not moving at any speed. So in this case, get to a certain height, then stops momentarily. So in that case, if it, is stopped, if it has stopped momentarily, then it is not moving and the velocity therefore is zero. So momentarily at rest, velocity is zero. And notice that uh, we started by saying this object moves to a certain height, sorry, gets to a certain height, then falls back. It cannot go beyond that height. That aspect of falling back means the object has gotten to its maximum height. So I can reduce this. So something happens at maximum height. When it gets maximum height, it falls back. But before it falls back, it stops momentarily. And when the object is uh, stopped momentarily, that means its velocity is zero. So at momentarily at rest, velocity is zero. So at maximum height also, the velocity is zero. Why? Because when it gets to maximum height, it stops momentarily before falling back. So at maximum height, 
it stops. So when it stops, the velocity is zero. Now, this object now falls back again to its original position. And this takes us to the next stage. Now, I am standing at this point. So if I move in this specific direction, then back to the original position, the implication of that is I have not moved because I am still in the same same position. That applies in the same thing in the case of this object here. If it moves to a certain height, then it falls back to the original position. A certain height, then falls back. It has not moved. So in that case, we talk about return to original position. Return to original position. So if you return to your original position, like in my case here, back to the original position, I have not moved. So my displacement is zero. Remember, we said uh, displacement is denoted by the letter S. So in that case, S is equal to zero. S is equal to zero. So you have that. Return to original position, uh, S is equal to zero. Maybe you can talk about the last two. You start at a velocity, let's say you're cycling, you're driving, etc, etc, or even running. You start at a certain speed, say 10. Then you increase to a speed of 20 meters per second, 50 meters per second, 100 meters per second, up to say 180 meters per second. You cannot go beyond that speed. So you have gotten to your maximum speed. But before we even mention that, as you increase from 10, 20, 50, 70, 80, 100 to 180, that aspect of increase in speed, you already know it's called acceleration. So you accelerate until to a you get to your maximum speed. So you get to your maximum speed, you cannot accelerate any further. So if you are not accelerating, then your, speed, your acceleration is zero. So when you get to your maximum speed, your acceleration is zero. Now, the reverse is still true. When you start at a speed of, say, 180, then you apply brakes. So, as the car uh, reduces in speed, we say it is decelerating. Now, it moves to a certain speed below which the car then stops. So, when you get to that speed, which below which you, you're going to stop, we call that your minimum speed. So, we have maximum speed, you cannot go beyond that speed. You have minimum speed, you cannot go below that speed. Maximum at maximum speed, you are no longer accelerating. As you reduce in speed, you are decelerating. Now when you get to your minimum speed, you can no longer decelerate beyond that point. In that case, we talk about maximum speed, you cannot go beyond that. Minimum speed, you cannot go below that. So at maximum speed and minimum speed, you are not accelerating. So at maximum speed, minimum speed, your acceleration is zero. Here, acceleration is zero. And these are concepts that you will need to remember. But maybe we can uh, talk about uh, time in the same context. The same in the application. And I want to use this at the beginning of And lastly, during the third. 
So I write this, we have zero, to one, two, three, four. So if I'm told at the beginning of the third second, let's say we have a session, uh, we have a lesson which uh, uh, is supposed to run, let's assume this was a live session, which was supposed to run from say 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. So make sure you are seated at the beginning of the lesson. So where does the lesson start? The lesson starts at 7 p.m. So when I talk about at the beginning of the lesson, I'm talking about 7 p.m. So when I talk about at the beginning of the third second, I am therefore talking about 2. This one starts at 2. At the end of the third lesson, at the end of the third second, sorry, at the end of the third second. So at the end of the lesson, the lesson should end at 10. So I expect that the length that you will consider 10 p.m. as the end of the lesson. And the same case applies at the end of the third second. The end of the third second means 3. T is 3. At the beginning of the third, T is 2. At the end of the third, T is 3. And now, during the lesson, make sure you pay attention during the lesson. During the lesson means between 7 and 10. During the third second means between 2 and 3. So during the third, so here, at the beginning, T is 2. At the end, T is 3. And during the third here, t is equals to 2 and t is equals to 3. Or rather, talk about this. t is between 2 to 3. I will demonstrate shortly how you're supposed to use that in calculating maybe distance, speed, or acceleration. But that is what we need to know in this case. So you need to familiarize yourself with all this. Let's even take another example. If I am told um, at the beginning of the fifth second, so the fifth second, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. At the beginning of the fifth, so the fifth started at four. So in that case, at the beginning of the fifth, t is equals to four. At the end of the fifth, the end t is equals to 5. During the fifth, t is equals to 4 to 5. So you, you need to master that, what each one of them means in this case. And with that, you need to now figure out or consider an example. So we are told that uh, the distance covered by an object is given by, let me just write the question, the distance covered by an object is given by x is equals to distance s 2t cubed plus 4t squared minus 8t plus 3. So you are told find find velocity when t is equal to 2. So that is the first case. We are told to find velocity, find one velocity when t is equal to 2. So if you have an expression of displacement, I have said, you need to recall this S, V, A. You differentiate. So if you have displacement to get velocity, because the question is find velocity. So if you have displacement to get velocity, you differentiate. So I need to differentiate ds, ds because it's sp, so ds dt. 
ds the derivative of f with respect to t is equal to so we will differentiate that we get 6t squared plus 8t minus 8 and I am told to find velocity when t is true so in place of t because this is now the expression of velocity so this means that v is equal to because when you differentiate displacement we get velocity so v is equal to 6t squared plus 8t minus 8 so but the value of t I told when t is 2 so v is equal to 6 into 2 squared plus 8 into 2 minus 8 so in that case we should be able to get to the velocity and um, the velocity in that case is uh, 32 meters per second so when you solve that you should get 32 the next question we are told to find two instant when the particle or the object is at rest is at rest so recall that we said when the object is at rest when the object is momentarily at rest momentarily at rest that means that velocity is zero you must remember that at maximum height velocity is zero when the object is momentarily at rest the same thing the velocity is obviously going to be zero so we're going to take 6t squared plus 8t minus 8 that is the velocity and when it is momentarily at rest it is equivalent to zero so you notice that you are forming a quadratic equation you have a quadratic equation so the only assignment you need to do is to solve this quadratic equation that is something that you already know you can use the quadratic formula such that you have minus 8 plus or minus the square root of b squared 64 minus 4 ac uh, 6 times uh, negative 8 that is negative 48 uh, divided by uh, 2a 2a is the square so you should get two values of t the first one is 2 over 3 the other one is negative 2 uh, and obviously you cannot have negative time so you cannot say move from a to b in negative two seconds so the value of t therefore you must ignore that so t is equals to two we ignore the negative one not two but two over three so you ignore the negative value you ignore the negative value another example on the application example number two moves in a straight line such that its velocity Three plus ten t 
minus t squared. So find a acceleration when t is equals to find acceleration when t is equals to three. Now we have an expression of velocity and we are expected to find the acceleration. So you need to remember that when you're given velocity to get acceleration, just like in the, in the case of a displacement, we must first of all differentiate that. So we need to differentiate our velocity to get acceleration. Just recall this always as VA. You have velocity to get acceleration, differentiate. So when I differentiate dv with respect to t, I get differentiate 3, get 0, because a constant, you must always get 0 when you differentiate. 10t, so this is 1, 1 times 10 is 10. So 10 minus, differentiate this, 2t, because 2 minus 1 is 1, so you're left with t. Now, <coughs> you're told to find a question when you differentiate velocity, get acceleration. So this implies acceleration is, the expression of acceleration is 10 minus 3t. But what is t? Our t is 3. So acceleration when t is equal to 3 is 10 minus 2 into 3. That is 10 minus 6. We get 4 with 4 meters per second squared. That is the acceleration. Part B. We are told to find the maximum velocity. Maximum velocity. Now here, you must again recall at maximum velocity, at maximum velocity, it is no longer accelerating. So at maximum velocity, acceleration is zero. But what is the expression of acceleration? 10 minus 2t is our acceleration, which we are saying in this case, when the, when the velocity is maximum, this is equivalent to zero. So we can take 2t to the other side to get t is equal to 2t. And that implies that the t is equal to 5 seconds. But the question is not time taken before or before attaining maximum velocity. The question is you find the maximum velocity. So do we know the expression of velocity? It's here. So velocity is equal to 3 plus 10t minus t squared, but t is 5, because we have already gotten in the initial step. We have v being equal to v plus 10 into 5 minus 5 squared. So you have 3 uh, plus 15 is 53 minus 25, which gives us 28. So maximum velocity is 28 meters per second. And that is how you apply that concept. You do the same thing even for the others, even for the others. You will use the same approach to get uh, the correct answer at any given instance. Now let me introduce another application question for the calculus. <laughs> And this should mark the end of this topic. However, I still have one on the curve sketching, but I'll do that at, uh, later during the next uh, session when I will be talking about integration. That is where I will discuss curve sketching. Now, this is an application question. We can talk about, you know, we can discuss this one before. We come to the end. We are told a farmer has 100 meters of wire to fence.
So we are told to find what is what is uh, sorry for that. What is the greatest area he can enclose? with the wire and uh, just but to mention these are mesh wires so you know how a mesh wire looks like it's not just a wire so you have a mesh wire so it's um, which is 100 meters long and you're using it to close a rectangular piece of land maybe our rectangular enclosure let me draw it here. So if it's a rectangular enclosure, then this has length, width. The assumption here is the 100 meters of wire is in just enough to enclose the entire en uh, enclosure or the entire farm, which is, uh, is rectangular in shape. So if this 100 meters of wire is just enough to enclose this, the implication is that the 100 meters of wire gives us the entire length of the land or of the enclosure, which is 100 meters, which means that our land or the enclosure, the, enclo the rectangular enclosure has a perimeter, because that is the length of the wire, has a perimeter of 100 meters. That is the first interpretation, because the length this wire should give us uh, should co cover the entire land or the entire enclosure and if it's 100 meters long that means our wire gives us the perimeter of the land. Now, if that is the perimeter, you need to recall how do you find the perimeter of a rectangle? It is 2 into length plus width is equals to 100, the perimeter. You can divide by 2 all through to get length plus width is equals to 50 when you divide both sides by 2. And at this stage, you can make one to be the subject. So L is equals to 50 minus W. So our L here is 50 minus width W. Now, how the question is, what is the greatest area? area? So the area of a rectangle is length times width. But I already have my width. Our length as 50 minus W. So area A is equals to 50 minus width times width. So A is equals to 50 W minus W squared. And we are told what is the greatest area, the greatest. The greatest is the same as maximum, the greatest speed, the maximum speed, greatest area. So at this stage, you now recall the application of calculus. At maximum point or minimum point, the greatest is zero. So I need to get the minimum point for the maximum point. In this case, it is the greatest, which is the maximum. So at maximum point, the greatest is zero. That simply means you differentiate this to get the gradient. dA over dW is equals to, differentiate 50W, that is 50, minus W squared, you get 2W. Mm -hmm. Then, at that stage, note is that, at mm, greatest or at maximum point, the gradient function is always equivalent to zero. So we are seeing that 50 minus 2w, the gradient is 0, so that is equals to 0 at maximum point. So take 2w to the other side, where 50 is equals to 2w. So you divide by 2, you get w is equals to 25. Then you said that L is equals to 50 minus w. So L is equals to 50 minus 25. So L is equals to 25. But the question is, what is the greatest area? So to get the greatest area, you have the length 25, the width 25. So the greatest area is 25 times 25, which gives us 625 
square meters. And that is how you apply that concept of calculus in getting the area. So we start in concrete, 100 in the perimeter, then we equate. So how to get the perimeter? 2 into L plus W is equal to 100. Make one the subject. Now we use that to get the area. 50 minus W times start W. After getting the area, remember the question is the greatest area. So you differentiate. If they talked about minimum area, the same thing. You, you differentiate to get uh, the, the gradient function. And remember, at maximum point or minimum point, you just say the gradient is zero. So I equate you know, to zero, which helps us, it, in this that case, helps us to get the value of w. After getting w, you use the initial equation. L was equivalent to 50 minus w, so the L is 25. Then the question is area, so just take length times width, 25 times 25, you get 625. So that is how you apply the concept of calculus in getting that. So during the next session, we discuss uh, integration. Until next time, you can be looking at differentiation and familiarize yourself with this. And I want to encourage us, I will not um, upload any more questions. This is what you will do. So make sure after understanding all these concepts, do the honorable thing, get your solving problems. You already have the guide. The only thing I will do is to attach the guide for those of us who may not have it. So buy the book if you have not. Use it to do that work. So you can just go to that column I have indicated differentiation. Do as many questions as possible. Until next time, you can have a nice time as you look at this. Thank you.